Hi everyone, Rich Crescenti here with another in our series of videos making music with Melodyne, and today is part two of our series covering whisper vocals. Now in part one, we covered how to make a whisper vocal gel with the lead vocal, and today we're going to cover some additional techniques to make it sit within the mix and the context of the rest of the music as well. Almost everything we're doing today can be done inside Melodyne Assistant and higher, however at the end we will be using the sound editor, which requires Melodyne Studio. And as a quick note, because these are whisper vocals, there is a lot of subtle information in here, so I do recommend listening on good quality headphones or studio monitors. All right, so let's jump in and take a look, and let's just see where we started from the very beginning. I'm gonna bypass all of Melodyne right here, and let's listen to the original track, as it was with this whisper vocal. Okay, and then in part one, we cleared out some of the breaths and did some adjustments to pitch and timing, and this is where we ended up. Great, that's sitting much better within the lead vocal, but I wanna make this fit a little bit better within the context of the rest of the song as well. So first up, one of my favorite ways to do this is with the formant tool. Remember, the formant is the unpitched portion of the vocal, and it's really heavily affected by the shape of your mouth and your throat and all of that. And that's why your vocals sound different in the morning than in the evening. But in the context of a mix, this formant tool allows you to raise the formant or lower it, which is a great way to move things up or down in the mix, especially if there are multiple vocals done by the same singer. It allows us to put these things into different places. So let's right click and go to our formant tool right here. And I'm just gonna set up a, a little loop around this vocal right here and raise this formant up and down. You can kind of see how it moves that whisper vocal up and down against the lead vocal. Let's bring that lead vocal in right here for context and give this a listen. Here we go. Lots of flexibility right there, moving it up or down. In this particular case, I actually liked moving it down a little bit. It's a little spookier, a little creepier. Sometimes we want those to sit a little higher. You've got options right here. Now, I'm also noticing that some of these vocals, uh, the whisper vocals are at kind of different levels. So one tool that I really like to use right here would be our leveler macro. Now remember, the leveler macro basically looks at whatever you have selected, so what I wanna do first is select these right here, just these blobs I'm trying to affect. And then what we've got is the ability to take uh, all of the louder blobs and bring them down, or take all the softer blobs and bring them up. Now this is a whisper vocal, so lots of low level detail, and that means low level noise as well. So in this particular case, I probably would not bring the quiet notes up, but I will bring the loud notes down just to even them out a little bit, right? Let's see how that has changed that here. That's good. That's nice. I like that. However, by bringing some of those down, I still feel like some of these need to be adjusted individually. So we can always come over here to our amplitude tool. And then looking at these, I could bring this one up a little bit right here. I'm kind of trying to make the body of these fairly similar. I might bring this one down a little bit right there. Maybe this one needs to come up a little bit. And I think this one needs to come up here a little bit as well. Definitely this one right here. Let's give this a listen. I am a Great. I really like how that evened those out a little bit, and they are more consistent. However, if you look at these, and if we look at just the whisper vocal, you can see that some of these have a very percussive front end right there. So I've brought up the amplitude, which evened out the, the body of it, but now the, the front edge, the attack portion of this is hitting a little too hard. So I want to bring that down. And there's a couple of ways that we can do that. One of them is by right clicking, going over your time tool and coming down to the attack speed tool. I'm gonna select all of these real quick right here. What the attack speed tool does is speed up or slow down 
the amount of time it takes for this blob to get to its peak amplitude. And you can see what you've adjusted by this black circle right here. You don't need to click on the black circle. You can click anywhere in the blob, but let me let this play and I'll bring down this attack speed and we'll see how it works. Let's check this out. Let's hear this with the lead vocal in context as well. I am unfolding it. I am unfolding it. Let's hear that just by itself. Okay, that did what I wanted it to do. However, in this case, probably especially because they're whisper vocals, I don't really like what it did. It created some artifacts. So that's not how I'm gonna solve it in this particular case. Let's right click and come over here to our context menu and just undo all of that. Another way that I like to solve this problem is with the fade tool. So let's come over here to my fade tool. And when all of these are selected, what I can do is drag a fade across the beginning. And I'm gonna drag this fade just past the attack portion of the note, right? You can see that right here. You can see that right here. That's the attack portion of the note. And then what I'm gonna do is drag this all the way up. And by doing this, I've effectively put a, a fade in place but gotten rid of any fade action. It rises up so quickly, it's like there's not a fade there. Now, as this plays, what I'm gonna do is pull down on that fade to just bury that front edge just enough. Let's give this a listen. I am unfolding it. I am unfolding it. I am unfolding That's great, I like that. However, again, I need to come over here to my amplitude tool now that I've cut off that front end. I'm gonna make some of these a little bit louder now because they're not getting that same percussive front end and I want more of the body to come through a little bit, right? Let's hear this. I am That's great, we've done a lot with that one right there. Now, the next thing I wanna show you requires the use of the sound editor. So let's open this up right here. And this is another dynamics tool, right? If you come right over here, you'll see this slider, which is your dynamic slider. And with this particular tool, it's different than the leveler macro or the amplitude tool, because what this does is deal with the dynamics within any individual blob. So I can drag this slider to the right to increase the dynamics within one blob so the level will drop away faster, or I can drag it to the left to decrease those dynamics so the blob will stay more consistent all the way around. On a quick side note, when you're using this slider right here and anything involving the sound editor, visually nothing will change inside here. So just be aware of that. All right, so let's bring this down because I want really to smooth out the dynamics within here. And as I bring it down, let's give it a listen. I am a Let's hear that just by itself real quick. I'm gonna turn off the lead vocal. Okay, I really liked how that brought up that low level detail, but now there's some breath noise and other things coming through. So this is a great place where we can go back to our fade tool. And I wanna point this out, this is important because sometimes these videos make it look like this is a linear process, but nothing about using Melodyne or music production or editing or mixing at all is a linear process. There's lots of tools and lots of push and pull. So coming over here to my fade tool, now what I can do is take each one of these, let me come to my fade tool, take each one of these, and I'm just gonna try and make them all kind of the same length right there, right? Make this roughly uh, a quarter note. Let's bring this over a little bit and bring that down. And let's draw in uh, a fade at the end of this one make it uh, about the same length there as well, and bring that down. Same thing here, bring that down. Same thing here, I kinda want all of these to be roughly the same length so that rhythmically it makes sense within the context of the song. And then also what I'm doing is really just getting rid of that noise that's at the end. Drop one in right there, drop one in right there and drag that down. And then same thing for this last one right here. All right, let's bring this uh, let's actually just listen to this by itself. I am it. 
All right, some of those ends sound a little bit uh, abrupt. However, if we listen to this in context of the original lead vocal, let's hear it. I am Very nice. All right, so let's bypass everything and see where we started. Here we go. All right, and here's where we ended up. That's nice. It's subtle, but it's much more consistent. It's much, uh, it creates a better vibe by being consistent. The timing is there. It's moved around the lead vocal. It sits well with the lead vocal and in context of the song. So be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment. I hope you've enjoyed this today. Thanks.